name is Thomas Poon and I'm the Executive Vice President and Provost. And what that means is that I have responsibility for academic affairs, student affairs, and enrollment management. So I've taught at seven different colleges and universities across the country from Maine to California. And what makes LMU students stand out is their superhuman ability, right, to first of all face what I think is one of the most rigorous curricula in all of higher education, but then also be so involved in activities and organizations that really speak to their passions, like social justice, community service, the arts, music, the environment. I could go on and on and on uh, about the passions of our students here, and they really wear it on their sleeve, but academically, they're amazing as well. So that's what I think sets LMU students apart from, from other students at places like that. So there's a, a a quote that has been misattributed to Mark Twain, mm -hmm. which is, uh, don't let schooling get in the way of your education, right? Uh, an, a Canadian author named Grant Allen actually uh, used that quote quite frequently. And what it means is that, you know, you can learn outside of the classroom and you can even learn better when your emotions and senses are fully immersed and engaged, right? And that's why I think uh, initiatives such as study abroad or other immersive learning experiences are so valuable to our curricula here. So these represent molecules that I have researched in my career. So for example, one of these is called cyclooctene, and I used it to uh, discover a really unstable structure and observe it for the first time. Uh, another one of these is called 1-heptadecene, and we discovered that this was an insect pheromone that a certain species of chameleon stores in its cheekbone, and they rub it in a spot and that lures insects to it, and then they get to stand a little distance away, and then when the insect goes there, they zap their tongue at it, right? Because chameleons yeah. have really long tongues. So those are just some examples of the, the scientific research uh, that I've been involved in. So science is important in our curriculum, writ large, because science as a field is so important to the prosperity of humankind, right? And I also think it's a lot of fun. And you know, the ancient Greeks, uh, when they came up with their seven pillars of wisdom, three of those pillars were STEM disciplines, mathematics, geometry, and astronomy. And that went along with grammar, rhetoric, logic, and music. And these pillars formed the basis of the liberal arts, right? So it's important for our students to be well-rounded and have a liberal arts education. And as we know from the ancients, that liberal arts education included science. So many of the causes that I support or have been involved in actually came from students that I've taught in my classes. So for example, I once had a visually impaired student in my chemistry class who was told you shouldn't enroll in this class because you won't be able to do it. And she came to me and said, you know, I don't think I can take your class, but I'm really interested. And I said, well, what makes you think you can't take the class? And so we went into it and then I said, well, you know, let's, let's do some research on what resources are out there, such as audiobooks for students with visual impairments. Um, we actually invented ways to teach chemistry to the visually impaired and that student and I published a paper on that, right? So, you know, th these, these initiatives, these things that I'm passionate about, a lot of them have come in my life from interacting with students and learning what they're passionate about 
and um, and we just fed off of each other in terms of uh, you know getting involved and, and trying to make a difference. I, I played guitar since I was in high school. Uh, it, it arose out of loving the music that I listened to, and it it contained a lot of guitar. It was rock and roll, uh, heavy metal, <laughs> right? And so. Uh, but about six years ago, I discovered the ukulele, and I was fascinated by this little instrument with an amazing sound that was unique and only four strings. It was kind of an underdog instrument to me. But then when I found out what you could do with it, um, I just, I was hooked, right? Because it is such an underdog instrument, but you can play so many different genres with it. Most people expect, you know, Hawaiian music to come out of it, and that's a great genre, of course. But, um, but there's so much more. You know, you can play the blues, right? Or you can play, uh, you know, show tunes like uh, my favorite. So yes, I am a, a first-generation student, and you know that comes with various challenges, right? You don't have the prior experience of a relative uh, to guide you along the college process, which is, is so very important. But at LMU, we, we embrace first-generation students, and we have programming for first-generation students, such as our First to Go program. Um, I know that Student Affairs uh, really embraces and works with first-generation students and also our Career and Professional Development Office uh, has programming specifically and works with uh, first-generation students. So the important thing about all of these initiatives is that it's proactive in reaching out to first-generation students, especially those, of course, who identify as first-gen students when they apply.